the series, a lot of talks about blockchain in general and how it could be used like for a large variety of things. But none of that has really picked up yet. Uh, we can discuss why it has been so and what is theoretically possible, but the fact is we don't know yet. And we don't know yet because blockchains before, before 2018, were too slow and too expensive to actually realize any of the moments that could lead to their real adoption. There was a lot of hype around blockchains, but if you really tried as a developer to use some blockchain, it would be too expensive, too slow, you would like uh, reach the limits of the total transaction capacity. So despite the bright futures that everybody talked about, blockchains were simply not ready uh, to be really used in any commercial or in any public application. So most of developers come up with setting up their own nodes and building some kind of a fork of the current blockchain, but it is not the way we need it. We need a public network with a lot of transactions flowing through it, but uh, we need a single transaction to be really cheap and really fast. You know, the blockchain could uh, really go through a lot of business applications and could reach our everyday life. We need a system where we know that our value is stored and nobody in this world can ever touch that. We need a very secure data layer where any data can be securely stored with us knowing that it would never be deleted and it would be just there proving any fact that you want to prove. We are fascinated by the idea of an application that could live all by itself, function by itself and finance itself so that its whole life would be completely governed by the code that uh, was included in it. And any change to the application would be initiated by the people that are actually using it and are interested in how it behaves. So the main reason for creating MetaHash was to give developers the tools to build these applications so people can use them and so that we have a wide variety of applications that nobody owns and that are controlled only by people that are actually using them. So we have redesigned the network centralization of data in blockchain to uh, make blockchains for developers more affordable and more reliable and to let the applications access the data much faster than in any blockchain that currently exists. But for common people, it wouldn't be some decentralized blockchain or something like that. It would be simply a browser of applications. And uh, to really appeal to the general audience, you need everything to function very easy and very frictionless, so they can really step in. So we designed the whole ecosystem with users in mind that don't have to make any thoughts about how complex the MetaHash is inside. They just open it up and that's for them is just like a web browser where a lot of websites live and a lot of applications perform their functions. So uh, with MetaHash we tried to make a blockchain for developers that would be uh, fast, reasonably priced, uh, decentralized and secure at the same time. MetaHash is very fast. It takes only three seconds from the moment that you send a transaction into the chain till the recipient uh, can verify a fully confirmed and irreversible transaction. And we get this speed at a capacity of over 50,000 transactions per second. MetaHash is also very decentralized. Uh, anybody can set up the node and support the consensus. You don't need permission from any central governments to do this. As long as your nodes uh, get enough delegated coins to it, you are part of the network. MetaHash is also very secure. We have taken standard blockchain architecture but completely redesigned the way how we synchronize the data, especially between continents. And doing that, we have also implemented an additional security feature where the observers check the block on its way to the user on its path of the synchronization 
so it doesn't take additional time till we reach that. When we reach the point where millions of people actually use MetaHash and supported consensus and store a little fraction of the data on their computers, it makes the system practically indestructible that will rebuild itself whatever happens with it. MetaHash also has a very healthy economical model. As transaction fees flow in, they are distributed between the owners of the coins and the people that run nodes and the people that run metagates on their computers, making the coin itself valuable as the coin itself is needed to support consensus and uh, make the transactions flow. All the features that MetaHash has make it not just a cryptocurrency but a full ecosystem that start with meta apps that is practically a decentralized cloud to host applications that are indistinguishable from websites we currently use in our everyday life. After these applications get in the cloud, we have the chain that serves the needs to synchronize the data between applications, make financial transactions from users to the applications and from applications to the users that host them. With the variety of applications available in Metagate, we have practically the new internet that is decentralized and free from any central governance. We have high hopes that in years and tens of years that will pass, we will see how the MetaHash system evolves and self-develops itself. And we are thrilled to see how the system will self-govern itself and that would change how we interact in the digital world and how self-governed systems can exist all by themselves.